Hello everyone, I am Lythus and welcome back again for another video. Today I have my manga haul for the month of August 2019 and without further ado, let's just jump right into things. To start off with, I have volume 13 of Devil's Line. Now, I have heard that this is like the last volume of the story proper, but there is a volume 14 and from what I've heard that is some short stories. Um, but nonetheless, I will be waiting until Volume 14 comes out to begin the process of rereading the series because I've only read a certain number of volumes. I haven't read the series in its entirety. However, Devil's Line is an excellent series that blends action and romance very well. So if you're looking for an action series with some romance tied into it, then this is definitely a series that I would recommend. It also portrays vampires in a way I have not really seen portrayed in another series yet. Um, I definitely like seeing vampires portrayed in different ways in different series, but Devil's Line is definitely a series I would recommend checking out. Next up, I have Volume 2 of Shimanami Tasogare, or Our Dreams at Dusk. Uh, this is only four volumes long. I have read Volume 1, and I absolutely loved it. I think it is an excellent series about finding out sort of who you are and sort of becoming comfortable with yourself sort of as you are. And uh, definitely is in contention for one of my more favorites or one of the better new series to begin releasing this year in 2019. And if you're looking for a short series um, with more of a thought-provoking element to it um, that you're going to read, you're going to enjoy, and you're going to think about afterwards, then Our Dreams at Dusk or Shimanami Tasogare is definitely a series I would highly recommend checking out. Next up, I have To Love Rue Darkness, Volume 11. Now, there are 18 total volumes in this series. Of course, a sequel to the original To Love Rue, so not too many more volumes coming out for this one. Um, as I have said before, I have not taken a read of this series yet, mostly because I've been really enjoying the original To Love Rue, and I kind of want to read the former series before I proceed into its sequel, but really enjoy To Love Rue. I imagine I will continue to enjoy this series, but they are both 18 volumes long, To Love Rue being released in omnibus volumes and Darkness being released as singles. But uh, yeah, kind of caught up with this series, almost uh, only seven more volumes to be released here in English, so it is almost complete. But uh, yeah, can't really say much about this series in particular, but I definitely really like the original to Love Rue. Next up, I have Yokai Girls Volume 8. Um, this is a pretty standard Monster Girl series, although this, this one has a little bit of an action element to it. Um, I'm kind of iffy on whether or not I like that or not. Um, I think I would prefer it if it focused more on the relationships between the characters and left the action aspect kind of by the wayside. But um, I have been enjoying this one. Um, if you're looking for a Monster Girl series to check out, um, you know, this one is definitely one you could go ahead and check out. Um, as for other people, um, if that's not really what you're looking for, um, I'm not sure if you're going to find uh, what you want in this series. It doesn't do any other aspect particularly amazingly. It's just kind of a decent series that involves a lot of characters that are kind of unique and quirky in their own ways. So, I mean, if you're a romance comedy kind of person, you might enjoy this one. Um, but I think there are other romance comedies that are better. But I have been enjoying Yokai Girls nonetheless, and this is Volume 8. Next up, I was just talking about this series very recently, but we have To Love Rue, Volumes 15 through 16, or Omnibus Volume 8. Um, only one more Omnibus for To Love Rue to be released. Um, but uh, I really enjoy this series. If you're looking for a romance comedy, absolutely recommend this one. It's really funny. And uh, just really, yeah, if you're looking for a romance comedy with a lot of quirky characters with a lot of different kind of unique abilities, then To Love Rue is definitely a series to go for. Um, it's also, you know, one of the older ones out there that deal with sort of like the Monster Girl-esque 
Um, though this one, not really. It's mostly the characters just being a little bit more quirky than normal. Um, and some of them being space aliens that are basically humans, but slightly altered. You know, they're slightly different, but not too different. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're looking for a rom-com, then To Love Rue is definitely a series I would recommend. Next up, I have Berserk the Flame Dragon Knight, which is a light novel or novel, not entirely sure which, um, based on one of the characters from Berserk. And uh, I am a big Berserk fan, so I am always looking to see what more there is to offer in the series or kind of in the world that Miura has created. And I just kind of want to see what Makoto Fukami has to say um, about this world and his sort of additions to it. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, still shrink-wrapped. Well, maybe not. But uh, yeah, it is still shrink-wrapped. I haven't gotten into it yet. Maybe after I have read it, uh, I will give kind of an impressions on it. Uh, if you like Berserk, whether or not uh, this is worth picking up. But uh, yeah, just kind of a light novel featuring sort of a side character that is in the main Berserk series, and I cannot wait to give it a read. Next up, I have Volume 1 of Divine Raiment Magical Girl Howling Moon, which is as ridiculous as that name would imply. This is a dumb, stupid series that makes absolutely no sense, and it is just fun to read through. Um, if you're looking for something serious, it's going to take itself seriously. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this. Um, I would only recommend this if you are wanting to read something that is as over the top and ridiculousness uh, as a name such as this would imply. And if you're just looking for something crazy and stupid, um, then I would recommend taking a look, to, look at this. You're not going to get any sort of great philosophical content from this series, or at least not that I've read thus far. Maybe there are plans later, but I, I don't imagine there will be. Um, and the artist right here, Shoji Sato, um, is also the artist that did, uh, High School of the Dead, um, and it, it's very apparent, you can definitely tell it's his art style when you begin reading this series, but, uh, yeah, if you're looking for something dumb and stupid that's a lot of fun, then maybe check, look into checking this out, but if you're looking for something more serious, then maybe give this one a pass. Next up, I have Murcielago, Volume 11. Now, I have been stockpiling several volumes of this series because I do prefer to binge read series. I have mentioned that before. But of what I have read of this series, it is high-octane action, and it does not stop. It is always putting its foot on the gas pedal. And if that's what you're looking for, absolutely recommend this series. If you want non-stop action, and gore and that kind of thing doesn't make you squeamish. I think you're gonna love this series. Um, but uh, yeah, not really much else to say. Um, unfortunately, it seems Yen Press seems to have a lot of spine misalignments. Um, I've noticed that with Viz a lot recently as well. They they don't tend to have the best uh, quality control when it comes to like spines and stuff like that. Um, when you look at the spine on this one, one, it isn't too bad, but as soon as you go to the back cover, you see like all of that down there, but uh, not the end of the world, just kind of annoying. So long as it's not on the you know spine itself, doesn't bother me too much. Um, there's, you know, it's hardly noticeable just kind of on that left edge. But uh, yeah, Mercy Lago, high action, high energy, really fun series. Um, if you are looking for something crazy and ridiculous and over the top, I would highly recommend this series. Next up, I have Volume 1 of Ryuko by Eldo Yoshimizu. This is released by Titan Comics. Um, and I believe this is a two-volume series, or there's only going to be two volumes, so it's a very short series. Um, for that reason, I haven't gotten into this volume. I'm just going to wait until Volume 2 comes out and then just read the series in full. Um, so I can't really comment very much on the series itself. Um, I can probably show some of the art style here. So, you know... There you go, for those of you that are wanting to see the art style. Oop, bumping things around here. Um, but uh, as for the book itself, I've never had a Titan Comics um, 
series before. This is a $15 book, and for a $15 book, I feel the pages are incredibly thin. They feel like newspaper almost. Um, so not too thrilled about that. Um, it seems to damage pretty easily because I got this from in stock trades. Um, they really know how to ship their books. Um, all the other books that came in this order were completely fine. Um, but on the back cover of this, there's like a little bit, yeah, right there, of creasing on the back of this one. Um, you can't really see unless you get up close, but you know, when you do, you definitely see it. Um, so that's kind of disappointing, um, especially for a $15 book, but uh, that really has no bearing on the story itself. Um, so when Volume 2 comes out, I'll take a read and uh, let you guys know when, uh, whenever I pick that one up. But uh, that is Volume 1 of Ryuko. Next up, I have Yuri Life by Kurukuru Hime. Um, this is actually in full color. Let me show you right here. So if we open it up, oop, there we go. Um, and this is basically just a bunch of extremely short uh, single stories about different couples. Um, the beginning few stories I didn't really like, uh, but towards the end I started to like them more um, because they're all, you know, as I've said, a bunch of different couples. It's kind of a thin book, but at the same time, it is in that large trim size, and it is full color, so it's not, you know, that bad. Um, but uh, this one, if you're looking for sort of short, simple, kind of, you know, sweet stories, then you might enjoy this one, but it doesn't really get in-depth into, like, the character relations and why they like each other and how they came to like each other. Um, it's just very simple, which is fine, but... Um, when I'm looking for a series, um, that's usually not what I'm looking for. But uh, it definitely accomplishes what it's trying to do, which is display a bunch of different adult romances. But uh, it's alright. Um, it gets better, I feel, as the stories go on. But it's not my favorite Yuri out there, though it is in full color, which is always kind of cool. But that is the single volume series, Yuri Life. Next up, I have Secretly I've Been Suffering About Being Sexless, which is a autobiographical work by Togame, um, and it's as this would suggest, uh, she's in a marriage and they don't have sex, um, and it's just kind of her, you know, going through that, figuring out um, how to, you know, get it on with her partner, because um, she has a significantly stronger libido than her partner does. Um, so, I wasn't sure what this was going to be like um, when I first got it, um, but it gave me very similar vibes to uh, my lesbian experience with loneliness, and I think this is an excellent work, um, and one you should definitely check out, especially since it is only one volume long. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this series, um, and I would highly encourage you to check this one out, because uh, it is very interesting, and it covers uh, subject matter that you do not often uh, see, or at least I've not um, seen it very often. Maybe I'm just blind to a lot of things, but uh, yeah, this is the first work like it that I've ever really seen, um, and would definitely recommend it. Next up, I have Dead Dead Demons D -D 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 Destruction Volume 6. Um, there are currently eight volumes out in Japan, so we are almost caught up with this series. Um, I've said this before, I am very confident that an Inio Sana work is a work I am going to love uh, absolutely. So I haven't started reading this one yet, um, so I can't really tell you much about it. All I can really say is, Inio Asano has yet to disappoint me. I've liked every single work that he has done. Uh, I would doubt that this would be any exception, especially since I've heard a lot of good things about this series. Um, but uh, as I've said, I can't really say much about it because I've not read it. I just know I'm a big Inio Asano fan. But this is Volume 6 of Dead Dead Demons, Dead 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 Destruction by Inio Asano. Next up, I have Blank Canvas, Volume 2, 2 of 5. This is a short series, an autobiographical work about Akiko Higashimura, of course, the author of Princess Jellyfish and Tokyo Tarareba Girls. Um, I've read Volume 1, I've yet to read Volume 2, um, 
I wasn't sure how I felt about the first volume, so volume 2 will really be the volume where I decide whether or not I want to continue picking up the series, but it is an autobiographical work about her journey into becoming a mangaka, and so if you're interested in that, definitely check at least volume 1 out, um, but as I've said, I've not read volume 2. Um, I felt volume 1 was kind of weak, at least for me, though I've heard excellent things from other people. They seem to really like it a lot more than I do. Um, so volume 2 will be the make or break volume for me. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're looking for an autobiography for a mangaka, this is, uh, this is the one to check out. Um, but uh, yeah, it's releasing by Seven Seas in these larger trim size volumes. Um, and Seven Seas always does a nice job with their volume quality, but this is Blank Canvas Volume 2. Next up I have Yuri Is My Job Volume 4. Now I've read Volume 1, was really intrigued by it, um, and so now I'm just kind of waiting for more volumes to pile up before I continue reading the series. Uh, as you know, I'm a big Yuri fan, and the first volume as I've said, loved it, cannot wait to see where this series goes, but I don't want to hurt myself by reading it volume to volume and being sad whenever I have to stop, so I'm just kind of stockpiling volumes for now, but if you're a Yuri fan, absolutely recommend checking out this series. And if you're not a Yuri fan, but you are looking for a work where two characters uh, kind of are forced to work together, even though they kind of do not like each other for reasons that, uh, they have complicated paths with one another, um, then I would recommend checking this out. Um, I'm really interested in seeing how that dynamic plays out as the story progresses, and of course what the subject matter is on, but, uh, yeah, really love the first volume, can't wait to read more. Next up, I have Eminon Volume 2, Eminon Wanderer Part 1. Uh, as I've said before, this series is kind of weird. It's kind of broken up over multiple series, but Eminon is Eminon. As you can see, they labeled this one Part 2. This one is just the start of the Wanderer Eminon or Eminon Wanderer part of the story. Eminon Volume 1 was absolutely excellent, very atmospheric, very much you're just kind of living alongside these characters, sort of seeing how they interact, very slow paced, but very contemplative and atmospheric. This is a series I highly recommend at least checking out. I've yet to be able to read this second volume, but if you've not already checked this series out, absolutely do so, and Dark Horse has done an excellent job with the volume quality on this book. As a matter of fact, the entire first chapter is in color pages, um, which uh, is about 60 pages, so there's 60 color pages in here. Excellently built book for an excellently written story. Now, this is not, um, this is kind of a collaboration. Uh, this is a manga adaptation of a novel that was released prior. Um, but still, it's absolutely excellent. Cannot recommend it enough. Next up, I have Cocoon Entwined, Volume 1. Uh, this one was weird. Very weird. Um, and weird in a direction that wasn't overly interesting to me. Uh, I've read weirder, um, just kind of in an absolute sense, which is Velveteen and Mandala. That is probably the weirdest. No. Now, Super Dimensional Love Gun um, it is the weirdest work I've read, then Dementia 21, then Velveteen and Mandala, but I, I've read some weird works um, in, in my days. Um, this one wasn't as weird as any of those, but it wasn't very interesting in my opinion. The weirdness just kind of exists and is kind of bizarre to me. It didn't really give off that mysterious vibe or like kind of mystery elusive vibe that you know makes me want to continue reading i was just kind of like huh that's odd that's weird um and i, I didn't really care about you know anything beyond that other than like the descriptive claim that like it it's weird <laughs> um 
Uh, so I probably will not be picking up any more volumes of this series, even though it is a Yuri and I am a big Yuri fan. Uh, I didn't really get a lot of that in this volume. It's mostly subtextual. Um, there's a little bit here and there, but there isn't really a lot uh, of Yuri in it. It's just kind of odd and weird, and it's not told in any particular order. It's just kind of thrown together. <laughs> um, but, uh... Yeah, I'm, I wasn't really a big fan of this series, um, so I probably won't be getting any more volumes, but that is Cocoon Entwined Volume 1. Next up, I have Tokyo Ghoul Re Volume 12. Only four more of these volumes remain to be printed in English for Tokyo Ghoul Re. I really liked Tokyo Ghoul, and I'm just kind of waiting for all of Re to come out before I read it. Uh, but we are almost there. This series probably needs no explanation. Tokyo Ghoul is one of the most popular works out there, so I don't really need to say much more than that. Um, most people have probably either already read the manga or watched the anime for the first series um, and may have also been doing that for this second series just because they are so widely known and popular. So uh, yeah, not really much else to say about this. Tokyo Ghoul Re Volume 12 almost complete in English. Next up I have Stravaganza Volume 1 or Stravaganza the Queen in the Iron Mask. Now this is a two-in-one omnibus volume and this series is a total of seven volumes long. I imagine they're going to do three omnibus volumes and then volume seven is going to be a single volume. Um, so because this is two volumes in one the first volume is kind of all over the place. I mean, it isn't really until volume two that it really sets itself on a sort of narrative track. Volume one is just kind of building the world and the characters. Uh, so there isn't a whole lot of uh, plot in the sense that it continues on or there's a larger narrative at work. Um, there's a little bit of things that you'll see that begin in these first volumes that you see later on, such as one of the big bad sort of creatures that these people have to defend. It's right here. Um, you get to see how vicious those things are. And so that kind of sets up some later chapters. So I think the world building sort of in volume one is very nice, but you don't really get the payoff until volume two. So I think it's a good thing that these are in omnibus volumes. Um, I wasn't sure what this series was going to be like when I initially picked it up. Uh, all I knew is that it was a queen knight sort of figure and she was going to be going around doing stuff. Um, but I really enjoyed it and I cannot wait to read more. Um, so because she's the queen in the Iron Mask, whenever she is the queen, like in appearing before her subjects, she always has this mask on, which is kind of weird. Um, but she also doesn't really like to just stay in the castle. So you get a bunch of sort of interactions with her and sort of like the head of her guard uh, who doesn't really like her going outside of the castle because she's the queen and he doesn't want her to like get killed and stuff. Um, but she doesn't just want to stay in the castle because that kind of sucks. So you have some very interesting interactions between those two. Um, and unlike um, sort of a lot of series... Um, that kind of relegates certain characters to being completely useless. Uh, she's actually very capable herself of just kind of, you know, helping her people, leading, and that kind of thing. So that's always nice to see. And it's always nice that instead of the princess, she's actually the queen. So she has some actual power in the kingdom itself. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're looking for some kind of an action-y series with some very interesting character relations and some very nicely done artwork. As you can see right there we have this giant creature that's just there eating up a giant lizard man. Um, but uh, yeah the artwork is very well done. Um, if you're looking for a fun series uh, I definitely recommend this one. It has an excellent cast of characters that interact in very fun unique ways and it has a main protagonist that is extremely interesting to watch. So I highly recommend checking out Stravaganza, The Queen in the Iron Mask, Volume 1.
And last up for this manga haul for the month of August 2019, I have both Vampire Night box sets. Now, I have read Vampire Night. I actually finished it somewhat recently. Um, the first box set is out of print, so I got this one used, so it's a little beat up, uh, as you can probably see from some of the wear uh, in the corners, uh, whereas volume or uh, box set two, I got new, um, so it's all nice and pretty. Um, one thing, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys, there's, 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 there's one thing that, that is a real pet peeve of mine, and, 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 and that, that one thing is that these box sets are not the same height. Oh no. Why this? Why have you done this to me? The box sets are, are varying heights that, that, that's untenable. Why have you done this? This is, ah, uh, uh, I can't look at it for too long or, or, or it hurts. <laughs> I, do, I don't know why they would do this. Why would they design two box sets that are like in a series with one another and then make them different heights? It, it, it baffles the mind and, and I can't look at it for too long before before I like go insane but uh that that has no bearing on the actual quality of the series I, I just noticed it and I can never unnotice it and and it's it's a problem it this this shouldn't happen this, whoever was in quality control that day was, was sleeping on the job oh no um but uh, as for the series uh itself uh vampire night there are vampires who would have thought that um but uh, the way they've done it here with the box sets, it's split 50-50. Um, so this kind of 50-50. This first box set, as you can see, is volumes 1 through 10, whereas this second one is 11 through 19. And uh, this one contains uh, kind of like a day planner type thing as an extra goodie. And then the second box set contains the art book that's also contained within the limited edition release of volume 19. Um, the way they've done it, like, this actually kind of makes sense because the story is kind of broken up into two parts with a one-year time skip happening somewhere, um, between volumes, I want to say, like, 9 and 11 is where the time skip actually happens. Um, I really enjoyed this series. Um, I especially enjoyed sort of the second half. The first half of the series is, is pretty decent, but I, I feel it gets significantly better in the latter half. Uh, unfortunately, I think the ending is absolutely abysmal. Um, I did not like the ending at all. It feels very forced. It feels very weird and odd, and I just did not like it. Um, so I wish it would have had a different ending. Um, there are some weird pacing moments in the second sort of half of the series, um, but I still liked it a lot better, and I really, really enjoyed the series sort of on the whole so me saying the ending is awful um that's only one part of the story obviously it's a pretty big part but uh the story uh on the whole i really really enjoyed um if you're looking for a series with vampires you know this is definitely one to go for there aren't too many of those uh, in relation to series without vampires in them so if you're a big vampire fan highly recommend checking it out or if you're looking for a series with some very interesting sort of character dynamics and interactions, because I feel the characters in this series interact in a very sort of organic way that is, is very interesting to read through. So Vampire Night is definitely a series I would recommend. The singles uh, are still in print. You don't have to go for the box sets. I just like box sets. Um, so that's why I got these ones. Um, first one's out of print, as I've said, so it's kind of a pain to get sometimes. Um, luckily, uh, I found it for a reasonable price, so that's kind of what you know made me decide to get them both. Um, but highly recommend Vampire Night. I wish the box sets weren't a variable height. I still don't understand that, but uh, Vampire Night is a very solid series that I would definitely recommend, uh, and I'm definitely going to be checking out sort of the sequel-esque series, um, the ending's weird, so I don't really know how to phrase it. If it's a sequel, I think that would be correct, but the ending to this series is weird, okay? And I don't like it, but that's just one part of it, um, so I'll be checking out 
Vampire Night memories. Um, but uh, yeah, very positive opinions of Vampire Night. And if you're looking for a series with vampires or a series that has some very interesting character interactions, be they, you know, romantic um, or not, uh, I definitely recommend checking it out. And that is going to do it for this manga haul for the month of August 2019. Let me know what you thought of the series that I hauled this month. Which ones did you pick up? Which ones are you interested in now that uh, sort of I've hauled them? Or are there any series you want to know a little bit more information about? You know, let me know all of those things down in the comments below. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and share. And if you'd like to keep up to date with all of my content, you can either follow me on Twitter or subscribe to the channel and ring that notifications bell. And for any other questions, comments, concerns, issues, anything like that, you can leave those down there in the comment section down below. I always love reading the comments. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this manga haul for the month of August 2019. I am Lythus. Goodbye.